Somebody shout. Good morning, everybody. I can't hear you. I say good morning, everybody. More and more. Somebody shout more and more. The Lord will put more in your life today in Jesus' name. And the goodness of the Lord and the grace of the Lord and the power of the Lord will work mightily in your life today in Jesus' name. Amen. Those desires you have in your heart and those aspirations you have and the ambition, good ambition, scriptural ambition that you have, the Lord will give you the power to achieve and to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Obviously, I know you'll never be the same again. Something from heaven will come upon your life. Something supernatural will come upon your life. As you pray, God will answer your prayer. As I pray, God will answer my prayer for you. And God will lift up yourself, your family, and the whole church in Jesus' name. The Lord, Lord, today is going to be a wonderful day for me. A great day for me. A prayer answering day for me. Let heaven hear. It cannot fail. It will not fail. A faithful God. A covenant keeping God. Jesus name we pray victorious amen. amen father we do thank you at this time we bless your name because we know that you are on the throne and we know that your promises are yes and amen you cannot fail and because we are connected with you we will not fail and we're asking the Lord that today you make the weak strong in Jesus' name. The feeble, the fainting, you energize from the inner man. And will remain strong ever in Jesus' name. Bless your people. Answer their prayers and do for us everything you have promised you are going to do. Confirm your word in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. We're looking at Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12. And I'm reading from verse 8. Zechariah chapter 12. And we're reading from verse 8. It says, In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. I don't know whether you've come across that promise of scripture before. It's certainly not something. And this is Old Testament, you must understand. That the Old Testament looked forward to the time of the new covenant. And they were comparing or contrasting the old with the new. There were some things that took place in the old covenant. Under the Old Testament. That were previews of what would happen in the New Testament. For example, the translation of Enoch to heaven it wasn't an old testament promise it is for the new covenant something to come 
but there was something at that time and somebody at that time that looked up to God and went beyond his generation and went beyond his dispensation and he was raptured and he was cut up and he was taken away the same thing with Elijah what happened to him was not the regular thing that happened to everybody in the old covenant it was something new it was something looking ahead to the old testament to the new testament and as you look at the children of israel they passed on from egypt to the land of canaan the opening of the red sea it was peculiar to that time and then the opening of jordan as they cross over to the canaan land and you will see here it's saying now all those things took place in isolation happened to this happened to that happened to that other one and some of them were occasional but now it says a day is coming a time is coming it's referring now to the time of the lord jesus christ when he will come and then he will subdue everything and he will reign as king when he will come and then he will wrap up all those old testament experiences and then he will get us into something new that's why it says in verse 8 in that day the day that shall come and this is the day and this is your day and the lord will do something spectacular and something special something that appears he has never done before in that day shall the lord defend the inhabitants of jerusalem the lord is going to defend you every enemy power will be broken in your life every chain will be loosed out of your life every cause will be taken away it's a new day the day of grace it's a new day the day of power it's a new day it's a day of christ it's a new day it's a day when faith is doing something supernatural it's no more occasional it's no more one here one there then after hundreds of years another one there now it's a regular thing in that day at that time in that period shall the lord defend the inhabitants of jerusalem and he that is feeble among them at that day special day at that day he said now let's contrast the old with the new in the new day in the new era in the new period that is coming it says at that day he that is feeble among them shall be as david you remember david how david conquered goliath he said the feeble will be like that you remember david how he encouraged himself in the lord he said in the day we're living now those who are feeble and those who are fainting and those who are weak they'll be like the high and the great and the glorious days of david and then those who are like david today the house of david today will be as god they will be as the angel of the lord before them you'll be strong you'll be powerful and nothing will be able to bring you down in jesus name look at verse 9 and it shall come to pass it's happening today in your life it's coming to pass today in your life something great is happening to you today because it shall come to pass the promise of god is ready to be fulfilled in your life in your life it will come to pass say my life it will come to pass say my family it will come to pass say my local church it will come to pass say this morning somebody I'm, i want to hear you this morning it shall come to pass in my life it says and it shall come to pass in that day you see it's always mentioning in that day it's saying a day is coming you see they were looking forward when that child will be born 
They were looking forward when that son will be given. They were looking forward when he will go to the cross and die. They were looking forward to the time he will rise from the dead. They were looking forward to the day of Pentecost. They were looking forward to at the time of his ascension. They were looking forward when he will give us his nature and will have his nature will have his power, will have his authority, will have his name. That's why they always said in that day, verse 9, and it shall come to pass. In that day, I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Thank God, no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper. Every mouth that rises up against you in judgment will be condemned in Jesus' name. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace, abundant grace today, overflowing grace today, sufficient grace today, sustaining grace today, saving grace today, sanctifying grace today. Because it says, he himself from heaven, he will pour upon us the spirit of grace. And then he tells us, and of supplication. If you didn't know how to pray before, the spirit of prayer will come upon you. If you didn't know to make your request known unto heaven before today, this very day, it shall come to pass, it will flow from you flowing from your heart and as you say lord before you finish answer has come before you conclude the answer has come and then it goes on to say he'll give a spirit of supplication look at this and they will look upon him whom they are pierced and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only only son and shall be in heaviness or in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn you know what that is saying it's saying for the children of israel this is the period of the gentiles now the israelites they're still holding back the israelites they're still unbelieving but their day is coming but at this period of the gentile the gentile dispensation what Israel will experience in days to come, we are experiencing now. And that's why you read in Romans, it says, God is pouring all the Spirit and is doing all these things for the Gentiles so that all those Jewish people, the Israelites, will now say, that belongs to us. We should have had that. And the Gentiles are having that now. And it will provoke them to emulation and provoke them to wanting to believe. But for the Gentiles, it is our time. I said it is your time. And all this that we have read about, the feeble will become strong today. The weak will become strong today. And the fainting will become solid and steadfast today in Jesus' name. Scriptural courage for feeble saints. The three things we're looking at. Number one, spiritual comfort for feeble saints. Spiritual comfort for feeble saints. Number two, sound counsel for feeble saints. Counsel, that is sound. Sound counsel for feeble saints. Number three, strengthening confession. For feeble states, the confessions you make that makes you strong, that strengthens you, that empowers you, that puts you up, that keeps you standing, the confession you make that makes you overcome, strengthening confession for feeble states. Number one, what's number one there? Spiritual comfort for feeble states. If you are feeble today, well, everything will change. You ought to have comfort from the scriptures. Look at this. We're looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 14. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, want them that are unruly. Comfort the 
feeble minded support the weak and be patient towards all men see what he's telling us there number one he's telling the preachers he says this is what a preacher ought to do four things there number one want them that are ruling. Really. number two comfort the feeble minded number three support the weak number four be patient don't be rash be patient don't be bossy be patient and don't be impatient be patient with all men toward all men that's what a preacher ought to do that's what a leader ought to do he's telling us he says what's the responsibility you're going to see feeble people there and you're going to see weak people there you're going to see unruly people there and he outlines for you outlines for me outlines for everyone it says now we exhort you preachers we exhort you leaders we exhort you pastors we exhort you believers we exhort you fathers we exhort you mothers we exhort you soul winners it says one them that are ruly if they are ruly if they are uncontrollable you show them the consequence of being unruly the consequence of being rebellious and the consequence of being unrighteous and the consequence of backsliding and then it says comfort the feeble minded those who are feeble they don't know their rights and so they're going on the pressure is too much for me the oppression is too much for me the persecution is too much for me the situation is too much for me it says comfort the feeble-minded how do you comfort the feeble-minded with the word of God remind them of the grace of God remind everyone of the promises of God remind them that God cannot fail and then he says support the weak support the weak if somebody is weak support them but you are not supporting them to lean on you forever and ever you are supporting them and you are showing them how they will become strong and today if you are weak you are going to be strong if you are feeble you are going to be comforted and the promises of God will work in your life even from today in Jesus name and then it tells us over here it says we're patient toward all men patient toward all men we're looking at psalm 23 in psalm 23 we're reading from verse 4 psalm 23 verse 4 what brings comfort to you what brings comfort to me what brings comfort to those who are feeble? What brings comfort to those who feel, I don't think I can go on. I don't think I can make it. I don't think I can succeed. What brings comfort to them? Look at this in Psalm 23. It tells us in Psalm 23, I'll start with verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's what makes people feeble. They're walking through a valley. And it's the shadow of death. It's the shadow of something that may terminate their lives. A terminal disease. A difficult situation. Something that looks impossible. And something they have never gone through before. And now they go through the valley of the shadow of death. It says, I will fear no evil. Why? Because for thou art with me. And then he tells us, look at the last line there, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He's talking about the shepherd. He's looking at Jesus Christ now, not just as Savior. Yes, he's my Savior. You'll find in the Psalms, it says, God is my Savior. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit down on the throne until I make uh, your enemies your footstool he knows about the Lord he knows about the son of God he knows about the king that said that he said on his holy hill Zion and then he says your rod and your staff the comfort me the rod of the Lord will be your comfort if you want to uh, remember what uh, Moses did with that rod in the hand 
Look at the Red Sea before them. And then the children of Israel, they were afraid, they were feeble. The Egyptians have come, they are masters, they are the task masters, they're going to jump on us. And they're going, to, if they don't kill us, they're going to get us back to Egypt. But look at the rod in the hand of Moses. Because thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. And then they came to the place where there was no water. As there was no water, and they were thinking, what is going to happen? Again, look at the rod in the hand of Moses. Because that rod that opened the Red Sea, that same rod will bring water out of the rock. Water will come for you out of the rock. And then they saw the Amalekites. And then Moses told Joshua, and he said, Go up and gather men together and fight against those Amalekites. And then Moses went to the mountain top and he lifted up the rod. When the rod was up, then there was victory. And now we're talking about Jesus Christ. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is your shepherd. You will not lack. I said you will not lack. All those things you fear, Jesus has conquered for you. And Jesus is going to conquer everything for you this morning in Jesus' name. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures where you are restless, where you are moving here and there, where you are thinking about the problem, thinking about the sickness, thinking about the infirmity. And then you are here and there. It says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. All the stormy waters will be come down. All the waves will come down. And all the storm in your life, in the water, in the sea, the ocean of your life, everything will come down today in Jesus' name. He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. When your soul appears perplexed, and when it appears you're so feeble, you don't even know the direction to go. I'm confused about this. I'm perplexed about this. Why is this in my life? Why is this in my life? Thank God, restoration today. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When you're so feeble, that any little temptation might get you. Any little trial might make you unrighteous. Any little sin might just jolt you because already you're weakened because of your circumstances. And he says, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it's not the reality of death is the shadow of death and that shadow will not hurt you shadow will not kill you the shadow of a lion the picture of a lion doesn't bite and the picture of a sword doesn't kill the shadow of a sword cannot kill the shadow of an enemy even the shadow of satan cannot hurt you it's just a shadow that's why he said do i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil i didn't hear you i will fear no evil you know there are people their imagination is even greater than what uh, what is confronting them they imagine evil they imagine they're coming to get me they imagine they're coming to destroy me. They imagine they're going to wipe me out. They imagine those people are coming and those situations are coming. But you will fear no evil. For thou art with me. His name is Emmanuel. Thou art with me. And thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He says, though uh, thou preparest a table before me. How? I said, how? Where? In the presence of mine enemies. Those enemies, they will put their hands in their mouth and say, Watch, the more we try to persecute him, the more he's growing. The stronger he's growing. And the mightier he's growing. They will not stop the blessings of God in your life in Jesus' name. More and more. More and more. You'll have in Jesus' name. That prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
Thou anointest my head with oil. And it says, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Today, my cup runneth over. I said, Today, my own cup. My cup runneth over. Your cup runneth over in Jesus' name. Be serious now. Can it happen today? I said, Can it happen today? The cup of blessing, can it run over today? The cup of healing, can it run over today? And the cup of victory, can it run over today? And the cup of answered prayer, can it run over today? It's going to happen. It's unto you, not just according to your faith, according to our faith. It's going to happen to you in Jesus' name. Surely. Somebody shout, surely. There's no doubt in your mind today. There's no doubt in our church today. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. The Lord will do it for you in Jesus' name. Spiritual comfort for feeble saints. We're looking at Romans chapter 15 Romans chapter 15 and I'm reading from verse 4 Romans chapter 15 we're looking at verse 4 it tells us in Romans chapter 15 verse 4 for whatsoever things we're reaching at full time we're reaching for our learning that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Whatsoever things were each in a full time. What does that mean? It says, look at Joseph and see what happened to him. Look at Joseph and see how the enemies thought, his own brothers, they thought were finished him. And see how he came out on the other side, like you're coming out on the brighter side of life. And it says, because of those things that are recorded in scripture, you understand that something great, something good, something wonderful is going to happen to you. And you come out as other victorious people have come out in the past. It will happen in Jesus' name. For whatsoever things were written at all time, written about Elijah, when it appears, he was fainting was feeble, was even praying a negative prayer and saying, you know, it's enough. I'm not better than any of my fathers. And he thought he wanted to die. But instead of death, God caught him away and took him to heaven. And maybe you're like that. He says, remember them, how things turned around, how definite change came upon them. And a mighty change is coming upon your life too. Remember the scriptures that are reaching at full time because of you. And you will have victory in Jesus' name. He says, remember all those examples of the people that have given testimony and see what the Lord has done for them and understand is able to do the same thing. He will do the same thing in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Psalm 119, Psalm 119. Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 52. Psalm 119, and we're looking at verse 52. 119. And verse 52, the comfort for feeble saints. Comfort for feeble saints. In Psalm 119, reading from verse 52, Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I will keep thy words. That's verse 57, 52 now. I remembered thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself i remembered your justice of old i've com i've comforted myself I've, I've remembered your dealings your dealings with your people of old and because i remember those dealings and i know that you're still the same you have not changed because of that i comforted myself it goes on to say in verse 54 it says the statutes have been my songs 
in the house of my pilgrimage. It says, I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, and have kept thy law. This I urge because I kept thy precept. And so as you look up to the Lord, you understand, it's happened to other people before. They were weak. They were feeble. It appears life was going out of them. Strength going out of them. Hope going out of them. But God gave them hope. That's what we now come to verse 57. Thou art my portion. Thou art my portion. Oh Lord, when you think about God, and then you understand that God is your portion. His promise is your portion. His power, your portion. All the possibilities in God, your portion. What have you to be afraid of? You understand? Is going to give a totality himself unto you. Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have, I have said that I would keep thy words. Isaiah chapter 52. Isaiah chapter 52. And I'm reading from verse 9. Isaiah chapter 52. Reading from verse 9, break forth into joy. Sing together, ye was places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. It has happened already. For the Lord has comforted his people. His comfort is coming your way. His strength is coming your way. His power is coming your way. His goodness is coming your way. He has comforted his people and he has redeemed Jerusalem. Let, let's back up now to verse 1. Verse 1, awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on the beautiful garments of Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. It speaks to you, it speaks to your family. It speaks to your family, it speaks to the family of God. It speaks to the church of the living God. Awake, awake and put on thy strength. We're strong. As a church, we're strong. As a family, you are strong. As an individual, the strength of the Lord made available at the, on the cross of Calvary is for you. And it says, awake, awake. Look at verse 2. Shake thyself. From the doors, you know, feeble people, they're lying down there, and it appears because I'm feeble, I cannot do anything, I cannot take any step. Courage is failing me, strength is failing me. It says, Wake up and shake yourself from the doors. It says, And sit down, O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Any kind of bondage upon your life on your neck that is holding you down and you cannot move forward and everything you had and said you were going to do you couldn't do them now because of the bondage that bondage is broken today so it says you lose yourself from the bonds of your neck O captive daughter of zion look at verse seven in verse seven how beautiful upon the mountains at the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that bringeth peace, that bringeth good things of good, that publishes salvation, redemption, that says unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. If our God is reigning, what are we to be afraid of? That's why it says then, Thy watchmen shall lift up their voice, or the voice together shall they sing for they shall see eye to eye when the lord shall bring again zion break forth into joy you are joyful break forth into joy you are happy break forth into joy you are successful he said break forth into joy sing together ye waste places of jerusalem for the lord has comforted his people he has redeemed jerusalem the lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our god i will see 
I said, I will see. You will see that salvation, that redemption, and that victory, and that triumph in Jesus' name. And as you're expecting that, as you're preparing for that, as you're getting comfort from the scriptures, it says in verse 11, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from this, touch no unclean thing, and go ye out of the midst of her, be ye, be ye clean, that bear the vessels of the Lord. Chapter 51, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 51. And we're reading from verse 12. I said chapter 51. We're reading from verse 12. It says, I, even I, I am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? It says, the eternal one comforts you. The everlasting God comforts you. The most high comforts you. The power that holds the universe is on your side. And it says, I'm on your side. I support you. I'm strengthening you. And I'm going to lift you up. And I'm going to solve your problem. And I'm going to conquer and crush every enemy that comes against your life. And it says, what are you doing? Being afraid of a man that shall die. Or of the son of man which shall uh, be made uh, which shall be made as grass and because his comfort is available for you his power is available for you his authority is available for you and everything calvary has produced everything calvary has done is available for you because of that you are not afraid strength is coming your way power is coming your way the authority that overcomes is coming your way in Jesus' name. Point number two, sound counsel. For feeble saints, sound counsel. For feeble saints. You see, he gives us counsel. He tells us what to do. And many times when Jesus Christ was here on earth and people had problems, he told them what to do. And he did not say, I cannot do that, that's why I came to you. But they, they knew that whatever he told them to do, if they carried that out, strength will come to them. A man's hand was with that, and he said, stretch out your hand. He stretched out the hand, and the hand became normal. And then there were people that were blind, and he said, open your eyes. When, he opened, when they opened those eyes, their eyes became bright, and they could see. And then when he said, fill those water pots with water, and then carry it now, and take out of it to the master of ceremony. And they did that, it had become wine. And when the Lord counsels you today, and he says, this is what you do, do it, and you'll find that every weakness will vanish away from your life. We're looking at we're looking at Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12. It tells us the counsel, sound counsel for feeble saints. It says, Wherefore, lift up the hand that hang down and the feeble knees. It says, say, This is what you do. Don't just sit down there and say, I'm weak sit down there and say I'm feeble it says lift up the hand hanging down lift up those feeble legs and it says in verse 13 and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed and then it says follow peace follow peace you're feeble you can follow peace you're feeble. In fact, if anybody should follow peace with all men, if somebody is feeble, you're feeble, and you don't want to spend your strength, the little strength that remains, in fighting. You don't want to spend the little strength that remains in, uh, you know, being in conflict with a kind of battle you are not called upon to wage. Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You will listen to the counsel of the lord and you become strong you become uh, you become uh, mighty in jesus name isaiah chapter 35 isaiah chapter 35 sound counsel for feeble says isaiah chapter 35 and we're reading from verse 3 chapter 35 
and reading from verse 3. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 3. Look at this. Strength the inner, ye the weak hands, and confirm the feeble knees. If your knees are feeble, it says, confirm them, confirm them. And say, my feet, you cannot be weak at this time. You cannot be feeble at this time. If you are to pray, you will not say, I cannot pray. Of course, the counsel is pray. And if you will pray, the Lord will answer that prayer. And say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong. That's the counsel, be strong. Thank God I am strong. I say, thank God I am strong. Everything that tries to make you feeble, you'll overcome in Jesus' name. Everything that tries to weaken you, you're going to be stronger than everything in Jesus' name. Say to them, that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come. This morning, your God will come. In this retreat, your God will come. He'll come to solve your problem. He'll come to take the infirmity away. He'll come to uh, stop all the oppression in your life in Jesus' name. He says, even God with a recompense, even God, he will come and save you. He will come and save you. He will come and heal you. He will come and deliver you. He'll come and set you free. It will happen today. Then the eyes of the blind, tell me, shall be opened. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. This is your day. If you are blind, your eyes will open. That's what he said he'll do. He said God will come. Where God is, there's opening of eyes for the blind. It says your God will come. Where God is, there's your stopping of the ear for those who are deaf. Where God is, there is the strength for the limb to rise up and walk. Where God is, there is miracle. You're going to get the miracle today. I said you are going to get that miracle today. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart. And the tongue of the and the tongue of the dumb sing, for in the wilderness shall the waters shall waters break out and streams in the desert, and the patch ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. Are you there? I said the I read the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall be great, shall be grass with reeds and rushes, and, so, and an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. As you come to that holiness experience, unclean people will not pass in your house, in your family, in Jesus' name. As you come to this holiness experience, your business will not experience all the powers of darkness of the unclean people. They will not get there anymore. Have authority over in your business, in your house, your family anymore in Jesus' name. But it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, the fools shall not hear therein. No lion shall be there. No lion shall be there. Those who are destructive, they will not come against your life. And those who are beastly, and they have, they have a lion spirit, and they have a lion intention, and they have a destructive intention, they will not affect your life anymore. In Jesus' name, your life is secured. Your family is secured. And everything around you that belongs to you, they're secured in Jesus' name. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up there, thereupon. And thereon. And then it says, it shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy your joy will not know any end 
everlasting joy upon their heads. And then it says, and they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sign shall flee away. Sorrow and sign shall flee away. Problems, oppression will flee away. Destruction, death will flee away. And all those negative things of the devil will clear away from your life in Jesus' name. The counsel, the counsel. Sound counsel for feeble saints. Job chapter 4. In Job chapter 4, I'm reading from verses 4 and 5. Job chapter 4. And we're reading from verses 4 and 5. Look at what the word of God is saying. And is counseling to those who are feeble and to those who are fainting and for those who are weak. It says, Thy words have upholding him that was failing, that was falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. But now it is come upon thee, and thou faintest, it touches thee, and thou art troubled. You know what they were telling Job? They said, Job, you have been a counselor. Job, you have been an advisor. Job, you have been a person that exhorted all the people. Job, why are you lying down there? This is what had happened to other people before, and you counseled them. Now, the same counsel you gave to them, give yourself. The same encouragement you gave to other people, Give yourself. Look at that verse 4 again. They were saying, Thy words have upheld in him that was fallen. They told him, Thou hast strengthened the feeble hands and the feeble knees. He said, They said, Now you told other people, you revealed to other people, you encouraged other people, you counseled other people, and you lifted up the face of other people, and now you are lying down there. I have a problem, I have a challenge, I have an oppression, I have all these things over my body, and this happened to my family, that happened. They said, Wake up and give yourself the same advice, the same admonition, and the same counsel that you give others. What's that saying? Let's say you are a pastor. Let's say you're a preacher, and then some things are happening to you, and you cannot understand this, and then the uh, tendency is to say, why am I like this, and I'm serving God? Why is this happening, and I'm serving God? And why is that happening, and I'm serving God? It says, preacher, hold on, and sit back, and say, let's say somebody came to me now with this particular challenge, and with this particular problem and with this particular perplexity what will i tell him what will i counsel her it says exactly the same thing tell yourself and the same thing you have been telling them that brings them out of their predicament out of their problem out of their challenges you tell yourself you tell them words of faith tell yourself the words of faith you tell them words of encouragement, tell yourself the words of encouragement. And you tell them that they should not just lie down there and they should understand that God will come to their aid. Tell yourself the same thing. And what you tell them, if it works for them, it's going to work for you. I said it's going to work for you. And you're going to be victorious in Jesus' name. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 reading from verse 2 i counsel thee to keep the king's commandment and that in regard of the oath of god it says you're feeble you see there are times when people are feeble that's the time they think i cannot keep any commandment now i cannot uh, work for god now I cannot obey the six I told the Lord I'm going to do. I cannot fulfill my vows now. It says you're feeble and that's the reason you're giving up and it appears I cannot, I cannot, I cannot change it. I can. Somebody there, I can. Somebody there, I can. 
shout it out let the devil hear you i can and so it is and that's not the time you are going to give up on saying i cannot it says i counsel thee to keep the king's commandment and that in regard of the oath of god the oath you have made you're having a challenge in the family and you made a covenant before god until death do us part at the time you're having challenge it's not the time to sit back and say i'm reconsidering whether i'm going to continue in this marriage or not whether i'm going to keep to this family or not remember the covenant and the oath and then other times have consecrated yourself to the lord i will work for god i will do this for god i will do that for god and then some challenges come and yet to have made a vow unto the lord this is what i will do and because you are feeble now you say what am i going to do he says i counsel you to keep the king's commandment and that in regard to the oaths of God, all the oaths you made. You remember, you remember Jonah? Jonah was called of God. Go to Nineveh and declare unto them that word I have given unto you. He went the other direction. And then eventually, you know the story, the whale swallowed him up. And inside that whale, he said, now I remember, I'm going to fulfill my vow. It is when he said, I'm going to fulfill my vow. That vow then and the, the power of the Lord brought him out of that uh, will. It says in verse, in verse 3, Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Stand not in an evil sin, for he doeth whatsoever pleases him. It says it's not that time you'll then be sneaking out to, you know, prayer meeting over there and then to the mountain over there. Don't be impatient. Even if you're feeble, even if you're having challenges, stay there and say, God, you'll meet me here. This is the place I made my vow to you. This is the place I made my consecration to you. And this is the place I committed myself to you. It says, stay there, stand there, and the Lord will see you through in Jesus' name. Because in verse 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. And the word of the king is here today. The word of the crucified king and the conquering king is here today. There is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? What doest thou? He will do wonders in your life. I said he will do wonders in your life. Look at verse 5. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil sin. At the time when you are weak, keep the commandments of God. At the time when you are feeble, keep the commandments of God. And all the vows you have made unto God say, I stand by my vow. I stand by my consecration. I stand by my commitment. I stand by everything I opened my mouth. I was going to tell the Lord. And it says, be, you will not feel any evil. And then he says, A wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. And I pray that the Lord Himself will send thee even from today in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. I'm reading from verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Hast thou not known? As thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He knows how to solve that problem. He will solve the problem. He has the wisdom to take that oppression away. He will take that oppression away. He has the power to strengthen the feeble and the weak in a moment of time. He will do it in Jesus' name. He give it power to the faith. There we are. Today is going to give you that power. Sustaining power. Stabilizing power. And it's going to give you strengthening power. Even today in Jesus' name. It says, even the youths shall faint and, and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But, tell me. Tell me out loud. They that wait upon the Lord. When you are fainting, wait upon the Lord. 
When you are feeble, wait upon the Lord. When it appears, problems are coming, oppressions are coming from right and left, from the back and from the front, and you don't know where you are going to put your feet, wait upon the Lord. When it appears, you're tired. When it appears, you're exhausted. When it appears, you're fainting. When it appears, you're feeble. When it appears that everything is going to overwhelm you, overthrow you, overcome you, and destroy you, wait on the Lord, and the Lord will bring you out. Because it says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Somebody there, you will run, you will not be weary. And it says, they shall walk and they shall not faint. You will not faint in Jesus' name. How does that happen? Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Second Corinthians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 18. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, it says, While we look not at the things which are seen. Huh, look at that. The things that are visible, we don't look at them. The things that appear very near, very close. You're looking at the wrong thing, that's why you're fainting. That's why you're feeble. You're looking at man. And the man is empty. And the man can do nothing to you. Because God is greater than that man. You're looking at a woman. And that woman cannot hurt you. Because God is greater than that woman. You're looking at a situation. And that situation cannot hurt you. And because you're looking at that situation. That's why you're getting weak. You're looking at your circumstances. And because of that. That's why you're getting weaker and weaker. And you're feeble. It says now. Close your eyes to those things that are feeble. You know what Abraham did? He did not look at his own body. Now dead. Neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. Because as long as you keep on looking at what you can see, at what you can feel, at what you can sense, you'll be feeble. But when you look away from all that, and you're looking unto God, the author and the finisher of your faith. You're looking unto Christ, the author and the finisher of your faith. The weak will become strong. The feeble will become strong. While we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen you cannot see christ you're looking at him yet you cannot see the promises you're looking at them you cannot see the grace you're looking at the grace you cannot see the spirit you're looking at what you cannot see you cannot see the power you're looking at what you cannot see it says we're not looking at what is visible we're not looking at what can be seen we're looking at what we cannot see for that, for the things which are seen are temporal. They will soon pass away. I said they will soon pass away. But the things which are not seen are eternal. The things which are not seen are eternal. The power of God, which you have not seen yet, eternal, is going to work in your life today. By looking at Psalm 27, verse 14. Psalm 27, we're looking at verse 14. It says in Psalm 27, verse 14, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. The sound counsel for feeble saints, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And it shall strengthen thine heart, which I say on the Lord. Will you wait on the Lord? I said, will you wait on the Lord? You know, it doesn't take a long time. You wait and you pray. You wait and hold on to the promises of God. You wait and you hold on and you say, I'm going to be victorious. You'll be victorious today in Jesus' name. Psalm 31 verse 5. It says, I will be glad. It says, in verse 5, into thine hands I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth, you commit your spirit, you commit your life, you commit everything that concerns you unto the Lord, and then you forget about it. Once you say, Lord, I hand this over to you. This situation, I hand over to you. This is my wife, I hand over to you. 
this condition of my husband i hand over to you in faith in faith not with any negative idea but in faith and when you hand over anything to the lord he will take care of it verse 24 psalm 31 verse 24 be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart it says be of good courage it strengthen your heart all ye that hope in the lord do you hope in the lord i said do you hope in the lord the lord will empower you it will strengthen you psalm 62 i'm reading from verse 8 psalm 62 verse 8 trust in him at all times you see that times when you're feeble trust in him at all times times when you are fainting you see that trust in him at all times times it appears you're overwhelmed you're perplexed you're confused trust in him at all times times it appears enemies are stronger than yourself trust in the lord at all times and ye, ye people pour out your heart before him god is a refuge for us god is a refuge for me God is a refuge for me. God is a refuge for you. Psalm 106, we're looking at verse 3. Psalm 106, verse 3. Blessed are they that keep judgment, justice, righteousness, and he that doeth righteousness. How long? How often? At all times. Those people are blessed and you'll be blessed as you do that all the time in Jesus' name. Now we come to point number three, strengthening confession for feeble saints. Strengthening confessions for feeble saints. You know, what you say is what you have. There are many people, when they are feeble, if somebody asks them, how are you today? He said, if you want to listen, you'll give me time. I want to tell you. I want to offload on you all that I'm going through. You know, everything is like in the downward trench. There's no this, there's no that, there's no this. And the more you talk about that, the more, you, the more heavy your heart becomes. The more you talk about that, the more perplexed you become. The more you talk about that, the more confused you become. They make the wrong confession. You shall have whatever you say. And so you understand, if you're really going to have what you ought to have, you'll make the strengthening confession. Look at Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, here is your confession that will strengthen you. Here is the confession that will empower you. Here is the confession that will embolden you. Here is the confession that will turn the weakness and the fainting of your life and the feebleness of your life, turn everything away. The confession you make after you are prayed. Have you not prayed? Have you not sought the Lord? Have you not committed it to the hand of the Lord? After that, then you watch your confession. We're looking at Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. I can see that you don't want to confess that. Can you confess it for everybody to hear? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Anytime the thought is coming, I cannot do that. I cannot do that. I can. I can. Somebody there, I can. Somebody there, I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, sometimes there's a hurdle for you to get to where you are going. And then you look at the hurdle. I cannot jump that. I cannot jump as high as that and i cannot overcome that then you remember your confession will betray you and your confession will stop you you will not even try but thank god i can i can overcome every challenge i can overcome every hurdle i can overcome every challenge and everything that comes my way because i can do all things through christ who strengthens me who is strengthening you i said who is strengthening you is training you enough to be able to do all things he expects you to do in Jesus' name. 
Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm reading from the latter part of verse 10. The last line of verse 10. Last line of verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 12. The last line of verse 10. Are you there now? It says, when I am weak, then am I strong. Can you say that? When I am weak, then am I strong. You know, if you understand that the Lord will strengthen you, and then you understand, times of weakness may come. And times of sickness may come. And times when you are afraid may come. But you remind yourself and you say it aloud. Let your ears hear what your mouth is saying. And you're saying, when I am weak, then am I strong. You will be strong. Joel chapter 3. In Joel chapter 3, we're looking at verse 10. Joel chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 10. Open your Bible. The strengthening confession for feeble saints. Joel chapter 3, and we're reading from the latter part of verse 10. If you have found it, can you read it out? Latter part of verse 10. That's the last line. One, two, three, go. You know what the Bible is telling us? As, as long as you are telling yourself, I am weak, you are not looking at Calvary. I am weak, you are not looking at the promises of God. I am weak, you are not looking at answered prayer. I am weak, you are looking at things that are seen. You are not looking at the things that are not seen. But when you look at things that are not seen, it says, let the weak say, I am strong. Are you strong? I said, are you strong? That's a confession. The confession that will pull you over. We're looking at Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13 and we're reading from verse 30 numbers chapter 13 verse 30 numbers chapter 13 tell me the verse verse 30 look at this and caleb stilled the people before moses and said let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it i am well able to overcome it I am well able to overcome it. God is able. I believe in God. I am able. God is able. I believe in God. I am able. God is able. I believe in God. I am able. It will be unto you according to your confession. Psalm 118. Psalm 118. I'm reading from verse 17. Psalm 118. And we're reading from verse 17. Psalm 118, verse 17. This is my confession. I said, This is my confession. Talk about yourself. This is my confession. Psalm 118, verse 17. Read it out. One, two, three, go. Say that again. That sickness will not take your life. That infirmity will not take your life. Those enemies cannot take your life. I shall not die. Say it. But live and declare the works of the Lord. Whatever is that thing that is bothering you today, the Lord is declaring to you, you will not die. You will live. You will declare the goodness and the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. Uh, Strengthening confession for feeble says. Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading here from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verse 6. So that we may boldly say, you see this? It's telling us to make a confession. And it's telling us, don't just stay there and be meditating. Huh. I have a problem. Huh. I have a medical, uh, pre, medical report. Huh. I have a great challenge. Huh. Look at this one. It says, get up and boldly say. What do you say? The Lord is my 
helper. What do you say? Say it out aloud. The Lord is my helper. And then what follows there? I will not fear what man can do unto me. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Say that. If you look at your life, then the mountains should have climbed. You know why you didn't climb the mountain? You are afraid of what men will do, what men will say. If you were to approach a sister for, you know, marriage, because you believe that's what the Lord is leading you to, you're afraid of what somebody will say or what she herself might say. If you, if you want to approach a brother as to marriage, you're thinking what people will say and what people will do. If you are to do the work of God and you are called to do something that appears, is that your aim? Is that your idea? Is that uh, your is that your uh, your calling? You are afraid of what people might say. And if you want to take a decision, a decision you believe the Lord is putting in your heart, you are afraid. Huh? If I take this decision, if I go this way, if I go that way, what will they say? And it says, now you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Can you say that again? I will not fear. I will not fear. You're not saying it for everybody to hear. I will not fear. What man shall do unto me. You know, sometimes you, you rate men too high. And you rate your enemies too high. And you rate your opposers too high. And you reach the people that stand in your way too high. And the Lord is saying, cut them down to size. Cut them down to their size. Let an atom be an atom. And don't think of an atom as a mighty scene, a gigantic scene. Let an atom be an atom. Let a small person be a small person. Let a powerless person be a powerless person. Let somebody that cannot hold you, that cannot hurt you, let him remain his own size. And don't make a giant out of every pygmy. And then you tell the Lord, I will not fear. Somebody tell the Lord, I will not fear. What man shall do unto me? You will conquer. I said you will conquer. That's the confession that pulls us through. We're looking at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 37. Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Cut those enemies to size. And understand nobody can hurt you. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things, tell me, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's our confession. And that confession will be real in your life in Jesus' name. First John chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 4. First John chapter 4. And we're looking at verse 4. Look at the confession he wants us to make. And look at the confession you ought to make every time, every time, everywhere. First John chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 4. It says here, I've got little children and I've overcome them. Thank God you have overcome. I said you have overcome. Because here is the confession. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Can you say that? Greater is he. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It will be so in your life in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27 verse 25. Acts chapter 27. We're looking at verse 25. It's a confession. It's a confession. Acts chapter 27 verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God. I believe God. I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Have you stopped your confession? I believe God that it shall be 
even as it was told me it will be fulfilled in your life the goodness of God will be fulfilled in your life the power of God will be fulfilled in your life make the right confession and then your life will come on straight we're coming back to Philippians 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 chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 13 Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me then verse 19 my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus rise up and make that confession my God shall supply my God shall supply my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus open your mouth and tell the Lord open your mouth and tell the Lord the Lord is able the Lord is able the Lord is able you're not weak anymore you're strong you're not feeble anymore you're strong you're not fainting anymore you're strong he comforts us the Lord is my shepherd I shall not lack I shall not want I'll not lose anything the Lord is my shepherd is by my side his rod and his staff they comfort me he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake yea though i walk through the body of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me that's your confession thou art with me thy rod thy staff they comfort me here is your confession that prepares a table before me in the presence of all my enemies you anoint my head that's your confession and my cup runneth over I will not fear I will not fear I will not fear what man shall do unto me stop breathing stop rating those enemies too high your life does not depend on them they are not mightier than Christ they're not mightier than your God make the right confession I can do all things I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me when I am weak then am I strong when I am weak then am I strong let the weak say I am strong let the sick say, I am healed. Let the oppressed say, I am free. Let the afflicted say, I am delivered. We're well able. We're well able. We're well able. Able to overcome. I shall not die. I shall not die but leave. I shall not die but leave. No, the problem that sickness cannot cut short your life. I shall not die but leave. Every time you feel the pain, make your confession. I shall not die but leave. Every time you are afraid, make your confession. I shall not die but leave. Every time it appears a hurdle is higher that you can jump, I shall not die but leave. Every time it appears an atom is becoming so mighty and so great, make your confession, I shall not die but leave. Every time a little rat is posing like a lion, you tell the Lord, uh uh. I trust in the Lord. I will not fear what man, what a rat can do unto me. So that we boldly say, boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. 
greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The greater one lives in you. And we're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. Through him who strengthens you. I believe God. I believe God. It shall be. Even as it was told me. I believe God. That it shall be. Even as it was told me. He answers prayer. He cannot fail. He will not fail. His power will solve all those problems in your life. He knows what to do. He's willing to do it. He has the power to do it. He'll get you over. Get you over. Get you over. Feeble? No, not again. Weak? No, not again. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody there shout amen. amen. You believe you are conqueror, shout amen. amen. You believe that day sickness will be healed today, shout amen. amen. If you have any prayer requests, you are reaching down, you can raise it up. If you don't have any prayer requests in your heart, just raise up your hand. God will answer every prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. We bless your name because now the feeble can say, I am strong. And the weak can say, I am strong. I'm asking, Lord, that you touch your people right now. And every weakness and every infirmity and every fainting and feebleness, you'll take away in Jesus' name. Lord, you promise that you're going to open blind eyes. Any blind eyes there, I command, receive your sight in Jesus' name. And those who are deaf, I pray right now, receive your hearing in Jesus' name. And if you're lame, you're paralyzed, your hands are weak or your hands are withered, I pray that strength will come into those hands right now. And strength will come into those that legs right now, rise up and walk in Jesus' name. And anything that is dead in your body, eternal organs that are dead, I pray that life will come right now. Power will come right now. And the healing virtue of the Lord will flow into your body right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray any other challenge, any mountain anybody has there, and Lord, they have presented the mountains before you. I command you, mountain, come out in Jesus' name. Be leveled in Jesus' name. That mountain be removed and get into the sea of God's forgetfulness in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that any kind of challenge that anybody has, and now they know they are not feeble anymore, but they are strong. They are not weak anymore, but they are strong. And I pray that you confirm your power, and you confirm the answered prayer in every life now in Jesus' name. Let miracle come for everybody. Signs and wonders for everybody. Healing for everybody. Deliverance from everybody. Answered prayer for everybody. And your prosperity to uh, come to their lives and take poverty away in Jesus' name. As you promise that you are going to do more. You are promised you are going to give us greater joy and greater happiness and greater fulfillment. I pray that you do it in every life, even today in Jesus' name. Confirm your power in every life. Your miracle in every life. The signs and wonders in every life. Your goodness in every life. And I pray, Lord, put testimony in every mouth. Nobody here will die. Everybody here will live. They will declare your truth. Nobody here will remain weak or feeble. They will remain strong in the Lord in Jesus' name. 
the greater one lives in everybody and lord i pray victory will be for everyone in jesus name now i can do all things i can do all things i can do all things through christ to strengthens me my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus i am well able to overcome i am well able to overcome i have overcome because great i see that is in me than he that lives in the world and i shall not die i shall not die but i will live to declare the wonders of god i will not be afraid what man shall do unto me because i believe god it shall be even as it was told me the lord confirm his miracle power in your life in jesus name we pray